Hey everybody, welcome back to yet another enthralling installment of Jackson Facts. So we've been talking a lot about the future of the human civilization on this planet. We've been talking about that for years and it looks like the stuff we've been discussing is finally coming to fruition. That out of necessity, we would evolve and develop more compassionate lifestyles. That is what is happening right now as we speak. And here's a little throwback to World War II. We're going to watch this fun old-timey video, just a couple minutes of it. Back in World War II, the strain on the economy that was caused by the war forced people to garden their own food. That's right. There was a shortage in the food supply, straining the economy, lifestyle of the everyday person, being strained, being suppressed deeper, deeper into poverty. And the solution was, well, let's just produce, we the people, let's just produce our own resources. So the government helped this. They went around and they would send a community garden assistant to guide you through what good gardening practices were and the do's and don'ts for good gardening. And it was that simple. What do you know? That's what we've been discussing here on the channel for years. So Let's do it, guys. Let's get Victory Gardens 2020 going. The future is now. We don't have to depend on those in power to provide us with their shitty, unsustainable, self-destructive societal systems and resources. And I don't want to hear this, I'm vegetarian bullshit, or I'm progressive bullshit. You either care about the planet, or you don't. You either care about the victims of your choices, or you don't. And what I mean is a lot of vegetarians are vegetarian for the planet or for their health or for ethics. And the egg and dairy industries are worse for your health, worse for the planet, and worse ethically than the meat industry alone. These industries actually prop up the meat industry. Where do you think all the animals in the meat industry come from? They're raped and exploited slaves from the egg and dairy industries, guys. Connect the dots here. It's not that hard to just go vegan, just be an ethical person. And a lot of these progressives, people who call themselves progressive, do so because they believe in compassion. They believe that we need to fight for social justice, for the survival of humankind. That's my impression of what a lot of progressives stand for. But how can you do that when you are contributing to the leading cause of death and destruction on this planet, the animal agriculture industry. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't have middle ground when it comes to raping and killing other individuals. It's plain and simple. There's no gray area here. With some issues, of course, there's a lot of nuance and a lot of gray area, but you can't kind of rape someone or kind of stab someone in the throat. It's just like saying, I practice rape-free Mondays, but Every other day of the week, I'm totally free to go raping other people. Hey, I, I oppose rape, okay? I oppose rape on Mondays. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's one of those things where, you know, I oppose needlessly murdering other individuals on Mondays. <laughs> but the rest of the week, I go around stabbing innocent individuals in the throat and then chopping their body into a hundred pieces and eating their dead flesh. Do you see the moral inconsistency I'm referencing here? Fact of the matter is, just, just speaking based on our measurable, factual reality, this is not my opinion or my personal belief, this is just the way our reality is. If you say you're a vegetarian and you say you're a progressive for the reasons that I listed, then you might be a hypocrite. You might just want to consider being an ethical person through and through head to toe, like you're designed to. You're not designed to go around being needlessly violently destructive, so just do what's in your nature and go vegan. You either care about the future of our human civilization and all life on this planet, the planet itself, its ability to sustain life is being completely threatened just by one species, the most invasive species in the planet's history, humans. You either want to stop that crap or you don't, and it's we the people, the masses, the consumers who are responsible for that. Sure, we were indoctrinated, conditioned, we had destructive societal systems imposed upon us by the wealthy sociopathic elite. They want us to be like them, to be sociopaths with no empathy, but sadly for them, that's not built into our DNA. So it's time for us to tap into our compassion and live lives that are morally consistent. So if you say, oh, I'm vegetarian, I care about the planet, so I went vegetarian. Listen, you've been bamboozled, my friend. Someone tricked you 
but it's okay. You have an opportunity to wake up and deprogram yourself. If you're a vegetarian, realize the meat industry is propped up mainly by the dairy and egg industries. Where do you think those chickens in the egg industry go when they stop producing eggs? They get a knife in the throat, just like everyone else in the industry. You got the dairy cows that are raped repeatedly. Once they're raped so much to exhaustion, they're extremely young when this happens, by the way. They're just children who are raped by humans and a whole nother species so we can steal their children's milk. Very vicious, perpetual cycle. Because once those dairy cows have children, if it's a boy, they get turned into meat instantaneously, ripped away from their mother. And if it's a girl, she gets the same punishment, the same torture and life of enslavement and repeated rape that her mom got until, again, she's too exhausted, raped to exhaustion. And then she gets sent off to become your meat. That's right. The dairy and the egg industry are primarily where we get the meat industry from. So there's no excuse for being vegetarian or for saying you're progressive and not being vegan, completely vegan. You can't do that. It's not, I mean, you can, but you're a hypocrite and you're morally inconsistent. So I'm just here to share that with you guys. Hopefully that has been made clear. Now more than ever, we need to develop sustainable systems of living. So let's watch this really cool victory garden video from way back in the mid 1900s, decades ago. I love these old timey videos. They are so funny, so entertaining, and it's inspiring to see that this has already been done. So it would be easy for us with modern technology and the kind of distribution of information that we have now to do this again in even more sustainable ways. So we'll point out some of the flaws <laughs> that we obviously need to update, but for the most part, this is what we should be doing. We should be having everyone learn how to grow their own food and produce all of their own supplies, energy systems, housing systems, sewage and waste systems. We can redefine these, redesign them completely into sustainable practices. But let's just start with food, the thing that we depend on and utilize in our daily lives most often. This is a film guide created by the Department of Agriculture in 1942. How cool is that? So long ago. Pretty amazing, guys. Gotta love that music, too. Look at this. The Secretary of Agriculture, Claude Wickard, had said a victory garden is like a share in an airplane factory. It helps win the war and pays dividends, too. That's right. We could be producing enough food to distribute to our friends and family, to our community, to the rest of the world, if we wanted to. We could be producing supplies out from our own backyard, from our communities, that would give us more jobs. Jobs that are more in alignment with our human nature, where we get to stay at home, be with our families, be out in nature, working at our own pace, on our own time. It would help the economy. It would help free up the money being spent by the normal everyday person on something as simple as food, something as important and vital to have every day as food that gets expensive when you're forced to go out and pay ridiculous amounts, inappropriate amounts, often for highly toxified, shitty food doused in chemicals people shouldn't be having to pay for that stuff in their day-to-day -day lives when it can be grown from the ground it can fall food falls out of trees if these industries that produce our goods weren't monopolized we would enhance the versatility of the production that means more people would find ingenuitive ways to produce these goods if we open up the market a little bit more and we allow more people to get involved and learn how to do this shit then we're going to quickly develop more sustainable ways to do this more adaptive ways to produce our goods there are so many benefits repairs the environment helps our health ends the needless slaughter of innocent individuals in the animal agriculture industry so many great benefits On this farm in the rolling hill country of northern Maryland, the holders rallying to the call for more food join the growing army of victory gardeners. This is Dad Holder. He helps with the heavy work. Mother, well, she helps with most everything. 
Okay, I love this already. I, I love the old-timey narration, the grainy footage. This is great. This is, this is gold. We'll point out real quick here, harvesting eggs, enslaving the life of a sentient individual, not a sustainable thing to do anymore. In this day and age, there's no way we can do this and be morally or logically consistent. If we're looking to develop a system that is sustainable, then we can't be enslaving other individuals. It's inherently, intrinsically unsustainable. Not to mention a single egg has as much cholesterol as a Big Mac. So it's not sustainable as far as your health is concerned. Two. Hey, do you guys know what eggs even are? It's the period cycle of a hen. And in regards to the ethical aspect, we genetically modify these creatures to be overproductive. So what happens is they produce based on how much we take from them. Since the egg is the product of the period cycle, and when we take the egg, it forces them to go back into another period cycle. Imagine what kind of toll this takes on the hen's body. Imagine if for some sick, fucked up, gross ass reason, we wanted to drink or consume the period blood of human women. And imagine if when we consumed the period blood of women, it forced their body to go back into the period cycle and produce more. How horrendous would that be? This is what we're doing. This is what we've genetically altered these hens to do for us, where they would normally in the wild produce a dozen eggs a year just like a normal period cycle, they now produce hundreds, 300 plus eggs in some cases in a year. This is horrifying. It exhausts their bodies. So they die at an extremely young age. And in the meantime, while their body is getting exhausted from repeated egg production, forced by humans taking the eggs, the eggs that were never evolutionarily designed for them to begin with. In the meantime, we're also fattening them up as quick as possible so that way when they stop producing eggs they're ready to go to slaughter and become dead flesh also did you know that they come out of the butthole yeah actually chickens have one hole for everything so they piss and shit out of the same hole and that's the hole they drop the eggs out of does that gross you out at all would you be grossed out if you took a nice clean egg from your refrigerator and put it in your own toilet after you took a shit and then took it out to wipe it off and eat it, would you be comfortable? Totally fine with that? Probably not. And that was when the egg is covered in your own shit. It's covered in another species shit. And you're perfectly fine eating it because it arrives to you all neatly packaged, all clean, and it says free range on it. Listen, I don't care how much room you give your slaves to roam around. This is the same argument Bill O'Reilly made about when we owned black people, when we had slaves, when we owned other people's lives. He said we provided them good food and lots of space to roam around. Good housing is what he said. So that justifies having slaves dragging people from their home country into our backyards to be locked up in cages. Also, we used to forcibly breed slaves into existence, human slaves just to be raised to be our slaves. We assigned them that purpose to be our slaves. And that was the justification that slave owners had at the time. They said, hey, I bred this person for my use. So I am morally justified in assigning them the purpose of my slave and them committing to that purpose. They now have to live out their life with no free will other than to be my slave. Listen, these animals, there's no quality or characteristic that makes them different from humans Enough to where they deserve to be tortured and enslaved, at least. Okay, they have just as much a capacity to feel pain and suffering as any other sentient being. So there's no justification for it. Again, I don't want to hear this, I'm vegetarian because I care about the planet bullshit. Okay, I'm vegetarian because I'm looking after my health. Garbage. Absolute nonsense. I'm vegetarian because of ethics. I don't like the idea of a dead animal on my plate. Absolute malarkey is what you are saying there. I just hope you know, I just hope you, at least you're aware that you are being a hypocrite. You are being morally inconsistent because the egg industry, the dairy industry, that is where we get the meat industry from. For the most part, we don't raise every cow into existence just to be slaughtered for the meat industry, specifically, largely about 40 to 60% of meat, depending on what country you're looking at, comes from the dairy and egg 
industries. Stop supporting it. There's no benefit, zero benefits. In fact, keeping chickens like this or any other living individual harvesting the lives of individuals and their secretions that were never made for you to begin with, this is not a sustainable way to do things because it requires more land. You could be using this land for crops, not to mention they eat the same types of foods that humans could be eating, things like grains and stuff, okay? You could be growing grains, feeding them to your family, giving them back to the community rather than breeding, forcibly breeding animals into existence and wasting the food away on feeding them food and water and shelter and land. I mean, it's just so resource intensive. There's simply no room for it in a modern civilized society, ethically or logically. So again, if you're progressive because you, you care about ending cruelty or you think you're a compassionate person or you're fighting for social justice issues, well, the biggest form of discrimination ever in the history of humankind is that against non-human animals, human supremacism. So let's start with the most basic, simple thing and not directly torture and enslave other individuals by paying for these products. That seems just like a, a baseline, a good starting point for someone who claims that they're progressive or claims that they're vegetarian for the planet. I don't want to hear it anymore. You guys have access to the information, especially here at this channel. Check out the veganism playlist. The information that proves to you beyond a shadow of a doubt you are being morally inconsistent. Hey, I was the same way. Okay, I won't deny it. I was a hypocrite for a huge portion of my life. I'm ashamed and guilty. And if you feel like I am shaming or guilting you, that's okay. You know, it's okay to feel that way. That means that deep inside you have empathy and you do feel ashamed and guilty for doing these things. You should feel ashamed and guilty. As I said, I just feel that way about myself. So it's not something to be super embarrassed about. Okay. And a good way to relieve that shame and guilt isn't by attacking the messenger. Okay. The person, me, sharing the information with you. It's by aligning your actions with your morality. Eliminate your shame and guilt by not contributing to needless death, rape, torture, mutilation, and enslavement. Okay, let's continue. Grandpa Holder, he says the only honest way to get a mess of peas or a crown of glory is to work for it. Brother Bill is in the army, but Dick, 14 years old, takes his place. And this is Jane, just 16. Grandpa and Dad always kept garden plans in their heads, but victory garden plans should be on paper. So, with the advice of the county home demonstration agent, they will study state and federal bulletins, which have been written to serve as guides in three gardens. A county home demonstration agent. Look at that. So, your local government, not the scary big brother federal government, but the local municipalities are saying, hey, you know what, we're going to keep it within the family, keep it local, keep it transparent, keep it accountable, by issuing guidelines that are very easy to follow that aren't too authoritarian or draconian they're not trying to take excessive control over your life they're not saying oh hey here's a garden mandate you're now required to produce this amount of food for the u.s population you're now being enlisted by the government your land is being deemed eminent domain and you're going to need to become a farmer for us and guess what we're using all monsanto products that's a little scary that's what happens when you take the power away from the people but this this is wonderful you have a little county organizer that comes to your house and shows you some simple basic guidelines to help you they show you what would work best for your land and your soil and the space that you have and where the sun rises all that stuff we could do this right now in a heartbeat. Now let's see on this little model of their quarter acre garden, the plan they work out. Here's the early garden. Here, four rows of early potatoes. Then two double rows of peas, early, medium, and late. This is so cool. I am effing loving this. Now, back in the day, people had bigger plots of land, but even in your own little urban garden, you can do this. You can go online, go to YouTube, and look at urban gardens. Look at this tiny little space this guy has right here. He's got tons of stuff crammed in there. Pretty beautiful. It looks like when you're standing there, a beautiful permaculture forest. Here's another one. Really pretty, nice little tiny space formed a garden. Here's another one. Now, a lot of these are even bigger than most people, you know, living crammed into these apartment complexes. But in a tiny amount of space. Look at this, a food wall. 
You can use old pallets, put them up on their side, and you can plant foods in here. How beautiful is that? So look, look up urban gardens. There's a lot of ways people use tiny, tiny amounts of space to do insane amounts of gardening, yielding a high amount of produce. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen. The future is now. And you notice how they're at no point in this demonstration going to say, and uh, for the rest of the land here, go ahead and save all that so you can get some livestock. We're going to go ahead and have the government ship you a bunch of baby cows that were bred into existence forcibly to be your slaves. And I want you to squeeze them into this tiny space. They're going to shit all over the land and they're going to dump toxic methane into the air. But listen, even though it's going to completely degrade your soil forever, (laughs) this excessive placement of livestock on this one little piece of land even though that's going to happen, and and even though you're going to end up wasting a lot of crops to feed to those livestock creatures who eat about 6 to 12 times what a human would eat, you should still do it anyway because it's American tradition, American-made beef. Where's the beef at? Well, it's in my backyard completely decimating the planet. That's where it is. No, they're not going to say that. They're not going to say that in this video because they did this victory garden, the government initiated this out of a necessity, out of a demand. And they realized that the needs would not be met, the demands would not be met if they wasted away the land unsustainably for livestock. You can live perfectly healthy, in fact, optimize human health on a whole food plant-based diet. So there's a bajillion benefits to going vegan and simply reducing the cruelty in your life as much as possible. Anyone who tells you that you need to harvest and enslave the life of sentient individuals to be sustainable or self-sufficient or healthy is lying to you or severely misinformed. One row of cabbage, double row of carrots and beets, half a row of each. One double row of greens, spinach, mustard, turnips and chard. Tomatoes, early and late, wilt resistant. Peppers, half a row. Radishes, lettuce, and onions next to the house. Asparagus and rhubarb beds are at the side. Pole beans, three rows. Four rows of sweet corn along the fence. This is beautiful. Look how delicious all of this wonderful food looks. And a lot of these are great instructions. I mean, great things specifically to be planting for long-term nutrient needs to be met. If you want to be able to store food and have abundance of crops that you can store throughout the seasons, these are great foods to be growing. These are also easy foods to grow yourself. They're great first-time gardener foods. So I love these instructions. What we could do even better, though, is not this forced, mechanical, artificial rows and monocropping type of format that we use today. We could actually do permaculture forests, and we could do little areas sectioned off to where it's clumps of a couple of trees. You have layers in the canopy. You have taller, food-producing plants. Below the trees, you have tall, like corn producing edible plants. Below that, you can have shorter stuff like tomatoes, like kale, like beans. You can then below that have stuff that is uh, viney, that sprawls on the ground. And then next to those, you can have root vegetables, stuff that grows into the soil itself. You could have layers galore all around you producing different types of food. And you can do a little section of complementary plants, you know, things that complement one another. And then next to it, you can slowly blend like a Venn diagram into a new group of plants that complement each other. Maybe not as much as this section over here, but a little bit, you know, as we're moving from one side to the next, like I said, a Venn diagram type where they overlap a little and then move into a new section of clumps of layers of different edible plant foods. And you just do this all around the yard so that you have this massive forest, a massive food forest. And it'll look like a beautiful tropical oasis, but it'll actually be highly organized and highly productive. This is how you ensure the highest production of crops from your plants. So you don't need to necessarily manipulate them in the ways that are very mechanical, artificial systems. We don't need to do it that way anymore. We can start to get back to natural methods. We can analyze, use modern science still, okay, still use are highly advanced technologies, but we use that to analyze what works naturally out in the wild and re 
produce that in our own backyards, in our own apartment complex balconies, even inside of our own homes, on our windows. So we can start to replicate what happens out in nature, what plants keep themselves sustained for long periods of time. For example, there's an old community garden just down the road in uh, the downtown area of where I live, little packed inner city area, but just a few blocks down, you start getting into the agriculture. You get out of the business district and into the agriculture of the city. And there's this old community garden right before you get into that spot at the edge of downtown, at the end of these rows, tightly, densely packed rows of houses. There's this beautiful, beautiful, massive open space of land that looked like it was an old community garden run by the local Jesus Center to help the homeless, but it's since been abandoned. But even though it hasn't been maintained at all for obviously a long period of time, there's stuff still growing there all on its own. Every couple of months, something new pops up. It continues, it kind of sheds like kale, for example. You know, the old leaves will die off the end and new ones will produce right from the middle. And it just keeps itself alive throughout the seasons without someone coming by manicuring it, watering it. Now, it will; those crops will produce more, significantly more, if they're well taken care of. If you show them some tender love and care, you manicure them. You know, they want to be harvested. They thrive on being har- harvested and consumed. That's what's cool about plants is they're obviously designed here to provide for the organisms around it to eat the plant. It thrives when you do that. Whereas an animal, an animal screams and tries to avoid you. That makes it a little bit difficult to eat a living individual when they have a will to survive. So so instead of forcing them, you know, to be your slave and have their throat slit, why don't you just let them do their business, live out in nature, give them to a sanctuary, let them live out their lives and stop breeding them into existence to begin with. These plants, they naturally produce. They want to be producing for you. Let them do that. Use whatever land is left on this planet to start developing community gardens, victory gardens, 2020, ladies and gentlemen. And we can grow things that just naturally flourish in whatever climate we're growing them. Things, foods, edible foods that are indigenous to that area that can become invasive to that climate wherever you are. We could start growing those things. Minimal supervision, stuff that is very much hands off. Obviously, in some places, Arctic regions, you're going to need to have more indoor, vertical agriculture and things like that. But there's still stuff that is such minimal maintenance. It's far more beneficial to do that even in an Arctic climate than it is to go around murdering the wildlife and eating their dead flesh. Chances are if the wildlife is alive, then they are finding something to eat. If they can figure out a way to survive on plants, then you as a human who evolved consuming a plant-based diet can figure it out too, especially with modern technology and advanced civilized societies like what we have today. There's no excuse. Now, that's just a quick taste of this. Can you believe that this was happening all the way back in the 1940s? But of course, big business owns so much of our government and our global infrastructure. This would never be allowed to happen. This would never be instigated by those in power because it would give us more power and they can't have that. So realize that you have the capacity to do this yourself. We have the capacity to do this ourselves, to share information with one another, share resources, and figure out how to sustain our own societal systems outside of the ones set up by those in power, forcefully imposed upon us. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. We will see you next time. Go vegan. And remember, the truth is just a click away. Bye-bye.